Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India second topic of the fourth module uh, on Madhubani painting and we are going to explore the uh, tradition, the habitual and customary uh, tradition of Madhubani painting uh, as it started. It was a complete feminine preserve and slowly it has uh, moved uh, to a much secular, less religious uh, practice that uh, is popularly practiced by the male communities, uh, the male members of the community, uh, of the traditional community. So, uh, this is very important to realize how the style of Madhubani painting uh, built it up, which were the guiding factor that uh, worked as operational factors to uh, give birth to so many uh, different styles uh, that gives us a character in Madhubani. Uh, in fact, uh, when we look at the art of Mithila, uh, it is like any other habitual art practice that is uh, being practiced um, all over in our country and also outside. Uh, these are part of the regular ritualistic rites, the practices of customary and uh, habitual uh, decorations. But from there, there must have been some uh, special reasons why Madhubani art it is so rich in its artistic features. Uh, so, let us uh, try to look at it uh, from the perspective of the stylistic variation and the divisions uh, which are the outcome of the uh, class division of the society. Uh, although there are uh, no divisions as such which is very uh, uh, stringently followed in today's time. But uh, we must uh, see how it developed in its formative years and how it has changed. So, let us see that uh, with as many images as possible. Seen in the picture is the veteran folk artist of Mithila, Sita Devi. She pioneered the art long back under certain circumstances and we are getting back to that. Uh, as we know that the folk art tradition of Madhubani as a feminine preserve uh, developed and grew in Madhubani in the region of uh, Mithila that emerged in its formative years to meet the requirement of daily ritualistic course. The artworks uh, embody a harmonious and rhythmic quality in them. The forms are apparently simplistic and extremely pleasing to the eyes. They contain numerous motives with symbolic significance, even if connected inherently to the religious customs, these art forms endorse a universal appeal. It meets the common world view that makes it so lively and communicative. The paintings are often accentuated with symbolism as they represent the intrinsic livelihood metaphorically rather than directly. The art establishes its scheme, remains adaptable to the ritualistic representational restrictions and at the same time remains open to the external influences. To realize its broader scopes and look back on the century of changes that has gone through enormous shifts in cross-cultural and cross-media influences and moves both modernization and revival of tradition. The women of Madhubani continue to create designs on the earthen walls and floors as part of their daily life, as the cause of domestic rituals, 
protective form and auspicious spaces created for the well-being of their kinfolk. They perpetually engage with the creative act in the name of oneness with God. Precisely, this transcendent ideology prevents the art form from disappearing that results into the simple economic and utilitarian augmentation that may not be achieved through any other means. While religious conviction explains its survival, the creative flair describes its universal spread and fame. Uh, following a prolonged ecological crisis in 1966 to 68, an endeavor to promote art of Madhubani resulted in some favorable outcome. To generate sources for non agrarian earning or non agricultural earning by the agrarian society, the women were uh, told advised and uh, persuaded to some extent uh, to transform their artistic ability. Uh, they were highly encouraged uh, to transform the kind of motives that they otherwise produce on the walls and floors uh, on paper uh, so that it can uh, get them some uh, revenue by selling them into the market to generate some fund uh, during the crisis. So, uh, their artistic legacy got remarkable uh, artifacts uh, in their making. The initiatives also regulated art production and initial marketing of the artworks. Folk artists reveal their creative pursuits within the context of their own imagination, experience and abilities. A unique example and living phenomena of realizing and then understanding their life, their cultural values and artistic taste, assimilating the knowledge and belief with great ease, translating ideas into a visual manifestation that is seen in Madhavani painting of today's time. Had it not been the exogenous factor of the patronizing bodies, would Madhavani painting appreciate the same recognition and acknowledgement that it bears today? The heart of the old society was form, community, cultural values, they have their own language and dialects and a characteristic sense of regional livelihood that accords back to ancient times. Art forms have been essentially associated with the agrarian culture, common instincts of decor for ritualistic purpose worked as a major cause for the continual of this tradition. A folk artist evolves a basic cognitive process by thriving line and color on any given surface that is shown in the picture that there are images and almost the entire part is filled up with two dimensional motives. They are flat but highly contrasted with the use of primary color. Very simple means with a beautifully rendered uh, composition with lots of intricacies and decorative balance throughout. Although most of the individual communities were not totally isolated, the inhabitants were particularly self-sustaining with a little need of contact with the outside world for a very, very long time. The chief means of communication between country dwellers and the outside world were the local government officials and occasional trade. 
essentially the cognitive content has been conveyed to this generation mainly by the women folk it is a legacy of a visual language inherited by the daughters from their mothers and mother-in-laws this particular feature of madhubani folk tra uh, tradition is a unique phenomenon that is unparalleled to any other comparable folk art trains uh, anywhere in the globe the constituents of folk arts are often established on a system but it has been observed that the artist frees himself from accepted representational norms though the images are recognizable we cannot call it naturalistic the tree is made with a basic understanding of it everywhere the form is executed with its basic essence and they are not with a conventional representational term although highly recognizable the stylization realized simply through transmutation of form motion gesture nature and state the two quotes that i'm going to read out in this context from archer 1946 the folk painting in madhubani mithila region bihar india emerged as a successful culmination of customary art practice the mithila paintings of bihar are related to the marriage ceremony and depict various details and symbols of fertility and prosperity the wall paintings practiced by women of the brahman and kaista families have preserved their distinctive character in an unbroken tradition through generations written in 1966 the very fact that madhubani's fame its prominence and distinction has got the fame world over is due to the resourcefulness and efforts of only the women folk who have endowed madhubani with this fame throughout the world the depicted figure is transformed into a divine simulacrum prominent eye for vision elongated torso to show strength arms multiplied for power and legs stretched for alertness the description also indicates the stylization the freedom of stylized formation that was used in madhubani that gives it an extremely expressionistic character that was uh, compared by um, lady archer uh, i'll mention that with proper reference later with the abstract expressionism of america which was a recent movement uh, i'm coming to the context of modernism once again in a um, higher detail but let's spend some time looking at the images uh, that are documented directly from the wall so seen here is the image of durga on the tiger and the artist has used all possible freedom to render the forms to exaggerate and express the optimum qualities i'll read another very important quote from santan and bakshi in 2007 written is the paintings on paper are conceptualized as a whole and done freehand without prior sketches with rare exceptions the artistic legacy can be well realized if viewed from the grassroots uh, level uh, from the perspective of the life 
that the people of Madhuvani leave like any other uh, countrymen in uh, anywhere. So from there comes the motives, the inspirations, the images that are found there are unique in their executional qualities. Uh, nevertheless, they are from the same grassroots locations. So uh, it's written by Santan and Bakshi in 2007 that paintings on paper are conceptualized as a whole and done freehand without prior sketches. With rare exceptions, artists begin by painting a border or frame with a geometric floral or faunal design that often will reflect the intended subject of the painting. Turning them uh, to the subject, they begin in the middle of the paper, outlining the image and then walk towards the edges. Details are added after the figures are drawn, the eye is filled in last to give a figure life. As this suggests, the paintings are rooted in an indigenous aesthetics, neither derived from nor seriously influenced by western or colonial schools, museums, galleries or patrons. So extremes of possibilities and heights degrees of assumptions that are seen in Madhuvani painting and it is quite a daring effort from the part of the uh, painters who are not trained in mainstream academic styles from the beginning and they are able to establish their own style uh, in the form of the uh, institution. The folk painting in Mithila came forth from a productive instance of day-to-day -day art practice, a common and regular phenomenon observed in the region. The women of Madhubani, the painters, are duly credited for their contribution and one must also not undermine the role of the various external resources to which the fame is additionally owed to. During 1950s, the Walter and Sons a publishing company printed a calendar with black and white reproductions of the native wall paintings. The beginning of Madhubani painting on paper close to the form that we see today were created in the year 1967 when an aid worker for the Indian government, Bhaskar Kolkarni, encouraged the rural folk and presented the idea of translating those paintings onto papers. The paintings traditionally practiced on walls and floors. One can observe extended miscellaneous of pictorial elements, varied imageries constantly being introduced to paintings over the years. Mode in which mental imagery transmutes actually through many levels into a vigorous style amalgamating their experience with myths and religious beliefs. A tradition with respect to its inherent nature associated to the life and spirit of Mithila and its people that are seen in the picture, it is too, too, too blended for the daily life. With the introduction of a new rather intimate surface, their individual artistic abilities were for the first time provoked by some external factors, as I said, with the intervention of Bhaskar Kulkarni, attending a freedom of expression out of the so-called ritual obligations, they felt freer to express their melodic themes and thoughts virtuously on paper. Madhupani painting till date is recognized for its highly spirited vitality and innovativeness. Has the steep outside age affected the foundation of heritage? How did the artist react to the change? For such openness also led to deterioration, as it has been observed in similar traditions. The various initiatives to popularize and to provide its practice with due gratitude caused change, but the creators knew it in their mind 
that what is the changeable factor, what is the invariable in the due course of the creation. Like any other folk art tradition, painting from Madhubani also mirrored the periodical change and traditional values of the society. The tangential factors, time and again, affect the fabric of all lives and society with their inherent traditional values, attempt to preserve culture unaffected within a controlled environment is, an, is not a very practical scheme, rather an imperative need is to realize the variable features and preserve the cultural augmentation, the tradition that will need the revisiting and re-examination from time to time. Even though the themes are completely regional, intrinsically consorted to their customs, is it the evoking pictorial quality that has attracted the viewers towards it globally for ages? A various artistic impact, strong, sincere and bold, the exaggerated modeling, the distortion, the phantasmagomic style call for an ingenious flair of the creative minds. It indicates the simplicity of people who live away from the complexity of big city life. The vivid color application, composition and incongruous juxtaposition of imageries are very imaginative and cheerfully decorative. The stylized forms and details accomplished into splendid designs are attained with a playful wish of the folk painters. The heart of the old society was the firm, community and the cultural values. Art forms intrinsically associated with the agrarian culture. Essentially being a feminine preserve, the cognitive content has been conveyed to its generations mainly by the women folk. It is a legacy of a visual language inherited by the daughters from their mothers. This particular feature of Mithila folk art tradition is a unique phenomenon that is unparalleled to any other likely folk art trains. The very fact that Mithila's fame, its prominence and distinction world over is due to the resourcefulness and efforts of only the women folk who have endowed Mithila with this fame throughout the world. Seen in the picture are Ganga Devi, Seta Devi and Mahasundari Devi. The folk painting in Mithila emerged as successful culmination of customary art practice. Transformation in the art of Mithila came about in the context of stylization and image delineation due to the change in the surface factor and also the stiff religious and caste or sect distinction that originated into the development of three different Shaili or school of styles. Characteristic Brahman technique is done using a flared straw wrapped in cotton brush to both outline and fill in the outline of the figures of gods and goddesses with large masses in the vibrant colors. Locally, this technique is known as bharni, literally meaning filling. Internationally acclaimed Kaistha Kalakars of Mithila also transferred their long-standing Kaistha wall painting technique into paper. Their paintings were done with the fine black and red ink paints and technique locally referred to kachni or the line drawings. One style optimized by the prolific and continuously innovative work of Shanti Devi using double outline of boldly drawn figures from Dushad community, the Pantheon and 
spaces between the filled with colored floral motifs reflective of Brahman style, but colors are less bright due to the use of natural colors. Those artists extract from the different flowers and roots of the variety of plants which are locally available there. Yet another style of painting by Channo Devi based on the Dusha tradition of small protective bodily tattoos known as Godna, which are simple figurative motifs with upturned arms, animals and birds of regular sizes are drawn within rows of lines or circles all across the standard white paper coated with cow dung. Apart from this paintings on paper, painting on earthen walls and floor is a regular domestic activity for a Mithila village girl. Not all of them, but some have shown remarkable proficiency in adding more aspiring elements and eventually establishing themselves as painters. The other are not full timers as artists and are involved with just domestic work, but ensure continuance of the tradition simply by contributing to the ephemeral art practice for regular customary rites. Although the aripans or the decorative patterns on floor are painted with white rice rice paste called pithar and occasional red dots of vermilion called sindur, the walls both inner and outer as well as, well as the mandapas uh, at the courtyard are colorfully painted. Earlier, the pigments derived from lamp black lime geru and other oxide and earth colors, local berries, flowers, twigs, branches, leaves, soils, burnt branches, etc., goat milk, cotton tipped flares, straws, bamboo sticks were used to color fill and uh, fill up the broad areas. Acacia gum was used as fixative binder for the water soluble paints. The painter they did the paintings on paper are open to paints available in the market now. They often apply Multani Mitti, China clay and cow dung tint to have a feel of marble on handmade paper and it also gives it a firm base. The hierarchy or the order of caste system comes from the Kshotriya Brahmins, Maithili Brahmins, Garnakayasthas and Dushyat. Traditionally, the research in context of Mithila indicates the symbols and motifs in the customary designs vary in contextualities corresponding to the change in social hierarchy and existential status of these communities. Simplification of thought and spontaneity of expression in creative process is often observed in the traditional societies. While on the other hand, the symbols are grounded to the rudimentary level more earthly as seen in the lower order of social hierarchy. On the other hand, sophisticated expressions or more complex nature depict similar scheme or idea as one goes up in the hierarchical order of a mature society or a traditional culture as said by the local people and experts. Madhu Shravani Puja Aripan, a traditional decoration. These patterns are categorized as the most complex forms of design conceived by the artist who aspire to exercise the generative symbols by introducing what is most essential to the ritualistic purpose. The Shotriya Brahmins are profoundly involved with their inherent traditional values, it subsists as an essential constituent of their existence and they realize the institution in great depth as mandatory for being. They are consciously perceiving the need to preserve the invigorate pattern of thought and performance. 
within the bounds of what they conceive. As a framework of nature, they have a true sense of belonging to their cause and origin. Such affiliations determine no conceivable alteration or change. On the cow dung plastered floors and walls of the mud built huts amidst the natural groves of trees and ponds in the remotest areas of Mithila, women daily paint pictures. They have been performing this rites as a ritual for generations and it is the way of leaving. How to preserve some of the remaining creative values of the traditional culture and art remains a question. A need to investigate their very own cultural backgrounds, an urgent need to acknowledge and create an awareness of a still living craftsmanship. If need be then, ensure sustenance of this folk art and craft traditions. It is practical in present day context. However, with the introduction of paper, uh, it initiated a paradigm shift. And with that, uh, it no longer remained uh, a practice which is intrinsically and compulsorily connected to the daily religious rituals. And as an outcome, it gave birth to a new community of the male painters who were not traditionally engaged into this practice. So with the introduction of painting on paper with locally available and also uh, the colors which they got from the market, uh, it started uh, another traditional exploration which were often secular, uh, which was duly responsive to the current happenings and that gave it a very different profile in today's time. So in our le next lecture, we are going to discuss all these factors that has worked as a evolutionary factor and how the male painters are included into the tradition and how they are continuing with the thing in a uh, wider continuum.